It is early in the morning, Tuesday morning, and I'm up after I got off work, and we need to talk. It's been a few days. Lots of stuff going on. Things that I've spoken about before. As we have heard, and as I've said, Mubarak was taken out basically so someone that would play ball could be placed in control. Now this is being panned out as the first democratically held election, joy to the people of Egypt. Things are going to get so much better now that they've had the, the supposed democratic election process. And as you see, Morsi has won and he is the Muslim Brotherhood's candidate. Back in the very beginning, that was the fear that the Muslim Brotherhood would gain control of Egypt. You know, Islam, Islamist, and that they would be actually worse on the people than it was under Mubarak. And that's another thing, even though he did wrong things throughout the years. He, as I said before, it was him and Hussein and Jordan that basically kept the peace of the Middle East. They basically kept the enemies of Israel from really banding together and raising a bunch of stuff, you know, and splintering everything apart to where it went into total chaos. Well, now they've got their candidate, and you hear that the, the uh, military generals uh, have stripped the president of power and whatnot, so that they're actually in power, which would make him, uh, you know, a figurehead or whatnot. So we can go through this, and we can kind of highlight some things in case you didn't know, and. Remember the square of last year where all the people were, I believe I showed some stuff over there, video, but all the people were massed, you know, protesting and ousting Mubarak, make it a great, better day for us. Well, they did, and things just haven't gotten better from what I have known and watched and seen and thought. And the reality is uh, he beat uh, Mubarak's prime minister just barely, you know, less than a million votes according to this. He is supposedly called for national unity and making a big deal out of the historic vote about it supposedly being democratic. They're not going to go democratic. I don't care what anybody says. You're not going to have democracy in Egypt. I don't know how to explain it any worse or any better. Islamic belief in law, the way these Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood's total overall belief is, it does not merge with democracy. They will and they are not going to allow democracy. You know, if the United States has democracy, you're not going to see Egypt have it. So, you had a whole bunch of people gathered about the results. Some of them were, you know, a lot of them were for Muslim Brotherhood, so they got overjoyed whenever they won. Uh, here's a statement. I'm your president, but not without you. I'm your president, but I'm not the best of you. And I believe he, he gave credit to the people that protested last year. Uh, only today do I feel like a true Egyptian. Only today I feel like a true human. I can get my rights from today. Only from today that live to be a free Egyptian. Well, we're going to see how free they are. And you're going to see how free they're not. I'm not harshing down on them for no reason. 
but I know what it is and I know what it will be. It's the beginning of a new era, correct, a new regime to remove all the corrupted old regime. Well, they're all they're going to do is re replace it with a, another corrupted one that's harsher in different ways on the people. As long as the military still has the upper hand in the country, the revolution isn't successful yet. Now, have you, I keep trying to drill that through. Has anybody there, out there, ever read any of George Soros's books? I mean, you can, you can read into how these international revolutions occur. They make it look on the outside like the people spawn it. But actually, it's spawned by turds like George Soros. He even admits, you know, he, he gives money, he gives help, uh, scumbags go in, his scumbags that he's bought off, they start some stuff, get some stuff uprising, get some people riled up, some of the good people get tricked, they join in, it makes a big mass, they start riling everything up, and it is for the simple purpose of overthrow, overturn, and replace, not for the best of things, but for or the control of things in, in the way these I don't want to call them elites because they're 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 actually scum dirt we'll just say the evil the way the evil wants to overturn things and make it make it even more their way it's bad to begin with but after you turn something over after you've broken it apart and you replace it with something that they want in there it doesn't get better. Uh, if Shafiq had won, it would have been the end of the transition and the revolution. Blah blah. At least now the revolution continues, however imperfect. Uh, let's see, we'll go down through here. He was quickly congratulated by Field Marshal Muhammad Hussein Tantawi. He was the he has been ruling for the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces after Mubarak was taken out. Soon after, he oh boy, this is a good one, he received the congratulations of Palestinian militant group Hamas, which is what? An offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the White House said it looked forward to working with him on the basis of mutual respect to advance the many shared interests between Egypt and the US. Hmm. Well, this their battle, political battles between the Brotherhood and the SCAF will begin immediately, pretty much. Mm hmm. Political wrangling could go on for some time. So you have some evil scumbags that replaced the other guy they took out and now they have a little control issue here. They don't want to share and one wants to be in total control. And believe you me, there's somebody over these people that's yanking the chain, putting them in, telling them what they want, setting it up, later on down the line. That's just the way it is. Well, let's go ahead and see what we got here now. Whoop. You know, everybody's seen a little something probably about Syrian forces shooting down Turkish planes. There's been some confusion as it shot down in international waters, uh, you know, Syria overstepped their boundaries, whatever. We're not there actually seeing it. Uh, but everything that I've been able to find and look at, the Turkish plane did actually go over the Syrian border and cruise into their airspace for whatever the reason was. However, the plane itself, from what I've been able to really concentrate on finding more than not, 
was actually shot down and, and crashed into the international waters. Well, this is a pretty recent report. Uh, and it says they fired at a second Turk plane, the military turboprop transport plane, not hit, nobody was hurt, a Turkey F-4 jet downing won't go unpunished, but no war aims. But Syria says they had no choice but to shoot it down. Ankara summons NATO crisis meeting for today. And this is out of Reuters. Let's look and see what Reuters said. Turkey said on Monday, Syrian forces had fired towards a Turkish military transport plane, which was searching for an F-4 reconnaissance jet. Damascus, Damascus described its shooting down the F-4 jet on Friday as an act of self-defense and warned Ankara and NATO allies against any retaliation. And the Turks, you know, they had to come back and say, it's not going to go unpunished, but they didn't intend to go to war. They don't intend to. It doesn't say they won't. It says they don't intend to. You know, so the disclosure of the second incident came on the eve of this NATO crisis meeting that Turkey summoned to address the shooting down. You know, which which Ankara described as an unprovoked act in international airspace. Well, Syria is going to come back and say, hey, it was provoked because they went over into our airspace. That's where they're going to be going. In, the, in Homs, Assad says here, rebels battle troops as the aid workers try to evacuate the civilians. And the Turkish TV reported that a Syrian general uh, deserted and other officers ran across the border. And Deputy Prime Minister Bilent Erdinc told the conference that Turkey would protect itself within the framework of international law, uh, what it called Syria's hostile action. And uh, everyone should know that this kind of action will not remain unpunished. So what, how are you going to punish them? You know, if you're not going to go to war, then you must be talking economic sanctions. And he also added, whatever is needed to be done will definitely be done within the framework of international law. We have no intention of going to war. We have no such intent. Hmm. Harassing fire. And after it was shot down, four helicopters, two ships were dispatched in a search operation, followed by the turboprop airplane. And uh, our plane, which went to search, was fired on. The situation was brought to an end following a warning from our foreign ministry. The foreign ministry official said the plane returned to Turkish airspace immediately after being fired on and the search and rescue resumed following communications through military and diplomatic channels. No injuries. There we go. According to Ankara's account of Friday's episode, the aircraft entered Syrian airspace briefly and uh, I guess they don't have a way to you know, know where they're at by mistake. Well, it was just an accident. We're just flying around up here. You know, uh, we don't know exactly where we're at. You know, we, our instruments on our planes were not able to tell us where we're at. So it was just a mistake while on a mission to test Turkish air defenses. And this is probably the truth. Some have suggested it may, in fact, have been testing the responsiveness of Russian-supplied Syrian radar that could pose a major obstacle to any foreign intervention, including supply of Syrian rebels or reconnaissance support. There you go. That's probably what you got. You got to lie about why we did something when they wanted to test 
what I just said. Then you come up here. And he says Syrian elements have violated Turkish airspace five times recently, but the incident has been settled peacefully. Well, maybe so, maybe not. So this is a Syrian warning. NATO is supposed to be there to strengthen countries. This would be the Syrian foreign ministry spokesman. If their meeting is for hostile reasons, they should know that Syrian land and waters are sacred. And Turkey says the wreckage of the aircraft shot down close to the Mediterranean maritime borders of both states is lying in deep water. The plane disappeared, then reappeared in Syrian airspace, flying at 100 meters altitude and about 1 to 2 kilometers from the Syrian coast. We had to react immediately. Even if the plane was Syrian, we shot it down. The Syrian response was an act of defense of our sovereignty carried out by an anti-aircraft machine gun, which was a maximum range of 2.5 kilometers. But we were wondering about the Middle East and uh, everything. The killing still continues and Assad's still in charge. And I told you, they weren't going to take him. He's not going anywhere. Here's a timeline, and it won't be broke until everything's fulfilled. All the objectives are carried out by well, who's yanking the chains and telling them what to do. And that has to merge with God's timeline, too. God uses scumbags, too. I want to say something briefly about Zionism and, and the building of Israel. Some term it as a, a Rothschild-funded Zionist state. <clears throat> well, let me tell you, when God prophesies something's going to happen, that don't always mean the good guys deliver the goods to make that happen. He uses all elements because he created everything and everyone. And even if it takes a dirt ball and his money and his henchmen to make that prophecy come true, it did. You understand? He uses everything. You gotta look deep within to get the true meaning of stuff. And here we go with uh, Pentagon spokesman George Little said the Syrian regime needs to answer for it. This once again shows the illegitimacy of the Assad regime and what it's going and deeply troubling what it's doing and it's deeply troubling. Well, you see somebody behind the scenes had a few suggestions maybe and it's just another way to rally uh, people uh, to group together in force maybe to go get him out but I still think if they do anything it'll be a droning that she, that's, that's been their modus operandi so far is to use a drone plane that's what Obama has had done ask Gaddafi if he could answer uh, here we go after the attack, Erdogan invoked an article in NATO's founding treaty providing for urgent consultations if a member considered its security interests threatened. Some kind of retaliation from the NATO meeting set for Tuesday, he could have invoked another article on mutual defense. Yeah, that's the big boy that I, I was going to get into. That he did not do so suggests the reaction will remain at least for now on the diplomatic stage. But there is an article, uh, oh man, I might have it wrong. I think it's Article 4. Correct me if I'm wrong if somebody's got that. But somehow I want to say it's Article 4, so I'll go ahead and say it. And if I'm wrong, go ahead and get me back and tell me, Mr. Rod, you missed it. But you just see it here. There is an article. It could be invoked on mutual defense. That means like, uh, hey, you mess with one of us, uh, you're going to have to mess with all of us. The European Union foreign minister's meeting in Luxembourg called for a calm from Turkey, saying they would increase, increase the pressure on Assad. And they said, intervention military-wise is out of the question. This would be the Dutch foreign minister, Yuri Rosenthal. It is not a matter of consideration for the Dutch government. 
That is also at stake in the context of NATO. Well, I don't think the Dutch have much of a military, so I don't really know why Mr. Yuri Rosenthal would even be making big time statements. The Dutch could be squashed in <laughs> a really small amount of time if somebody hit them one on one. <clears throat> Let's see, they're talking about the Assad defections and how it could encourage those awaiting a disintegration of his army. Little indication of a broader trend. And then you see, bound often by their Alawite background, the Al Alawites are really, 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 really loyal to him. So, you got to tackle them too if you want to get rid of him. And then there are Sunni generals too, that they tend to serve in administrative roles rather than field commands. Their religious adherence making them in authority's eyes <clears throat> more likely to sympathize with the rebels, so they think. And then you read about 10,000 people being killed by the government. Syria said at least 2,600 members of the military, security, have been killed by Islamic terrorists. So, Ankara, like the West, is torn between a wish to remove Assad and the fear that any armed intervention could unleash uncontrollable forces. Mm-hmm. Well, the Middle East is going to be where things go really bad at some point. And I don't believe we're way f far away from that point. I mean, we're not... Israel's kind of on the sideline right now. And no, they haven't made a move yet in June. So, apparently, I'm going to have to go farther into the timeline because I was pretty well looking at June. But we do have an incident, but it's not Israel. It happened to end up turning up with Syria and Turkey. And uh, back to the um, election in Egypt. I think I already also heard that they want to strengthen their ties with Iran now that this Muslim Brotherhood guy has got elected. So look for that too. You're going to see, you know, a strengthening of ties there and that may be pretty pretty dangerous you know but that's the way it's gonna go it's just the way it's gonna go now anybody been keeping up with this the lost treaty the law of the sea treaty and it don't sound like much, but whenever you, when you think about what it really encompasses, it is a big deal. And this, this is a little, uh, a few reasons why they have listed why they don't believe it should be signed and enacted by the United States. The U.S. has never went along with it, even though we've had some other signers. So what we'll go through this and say what why would we not want to get into it? Why would we not want to sign that? And we would lose our national sovereignty. And then this was made during the 70s. It is a monument to the failed socialist thinking of a bygone era. It creates a global government, NWO, global government, that supersedes all national governments and the U.S. Constitution. <clears throat> and that's why Reagan, President Reagan, refused to sign it in 1982. And it's been hanging, you know, what they say, hanging around like a lost soul ever since. So it's all, you know, it's always been an objective to have this thing signed. And that's why it never went away.
international taxation. According to Lost, now listen good, the oil, the minerals, the fish, and all the other resources of the ocean, quote, are the common heritage of mankind, unquote. And that sounds good on the outside. So any nation with the capability to harvest those resources must, must share the wealth. Who said share the wealth? Can anybody raise their hand and tell me? Uh, I believe it was Barack Obama said something really similar to that. I believe we should spread the wealth around. I believe there's enough to go around for everybody. We should spread it around. Okay, so that's what it said. The U.S. would owe a tax of 7% on anything it recovers on or under the deep ocean floor, which would be a Barack Obama word redistributed according to a new international seabed authority headquartered in Kingston, Jamaica. And this is According to, I like this guy, I mean, he's, he's pretty straight from what I can tell on a lot of things that he has issues with in Hoff of Oklahoma. This is the first time in history that an international organization would possess taxing authority over the United States. Do you get that? The first time in history nobody has ever had an international taxing authority over our country think about it get into it and understand it giving away our technology loss would require all states to cooperate in promoting the transfer of technology and scientific knowledge to explore and recover resources in the ocean u.s innovation in robotics geological mapping and deep water drilling would be transferred to hostile nations and corrupt third world dictators in 94 clinton signed the treaty did you get that <clears throat> his wife is Got a pretty powerful position. We both know they're both a bunch of liars. I'll say it again. In 94, Democrat Clinton signed the treaty. Uh, but the Senate refused to ratify it. And the CEI reports that his administration insisted on following this provision of lost and giving American micro bath biosmimetry equipment and advanced sonar technology to China. But this shouldn't say China. Nobody should actually call them China. I don't know why the products are labeled and people refer to them as China. They are communist China. To prospect for minerals in the ocean, unfortunately, the technology could also be used for anti-submarine warfare and this is a thing that we've been fighting against this is another Barack Obama wish which would be cap and trade for 10 years now since the Kyoto Treaty was formed the US House and Senate have rejected over and over again the idea of cap and trade that would amount to a tax on the American people somewhere between 300 and 400 billion in off. This B. Inhofe telling you this. He said in a Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing, they're attempting to do under this lost treaty what they couldn't do with legislation. Yes. Nail it. Right on the head. Environmental lawsuits. Article 194. lost 
It states that each member nation shall take all measures necessary to ensure that activities under their jurisdiction or control are so conducted as to not cause damage by pollution to other states and their environment. By signing the treaty, the U.S. could be liable for environmental damage such as ocean acidification and hu human, here we go getting blamed again, uh, for breathing and farting and whatever, <laughs> whatever they want to say. Human-induced climate change, you know, uh, up, up driving your car or something, in, in places far from our homeland. These regulations could possibly include island, air, and water emissions that migrate out to the oceans. According to Senator Inhofe, environmental groups such as Greenpeace and the Environmental Defense Fund are already lining up to suits already. In one case, the CEI reports that Ireland has filed a suit against a land-based nuclear plant in Britain on the ground that it would indirectly affect marine life in Irish waters by slightly increasing water temperatures. Mm-hmm. Well, there was also uh, something that I'm trying to look into a little more about the uh, uh, sea level raised on the coast. You know, they, they, here we go again, they're blaming it on global warming. Now, I ain't saying there's no ice melting. There is. But the reason the ice is melting is, is not what you're made to believe it is. It's not all human activity. You know? I, I agree with the idea that nuclear testing and whatnot and everything has trapped some of that in the atmosphere throughout the years. And, uh, you know, you've got your sun activity and everything going on, solar maximums and whatnot, and that that is the greatest part of this so-called global warming. You know, your cars and all that stuff, I've said it 10,000 times, maybe not 10,000, but a whole bunch of times, that you can look way back in history and you can see there were a whole lot more trees back then, and no concrete, no cars, no whatever, and we still had what we had back then, which is more than what we have now, okay? So humans and cows and livestock and that's all the reasons that they make these things out that this is happening is not actually accurate and I'm a proponent of yeah the ice is melting but I, well, I agree with others that have the thought that the the ocean floor is actually sinking you know cracking collapsing and whatnot <clears throat> and things are bodies of of land are actually going down in the water so you're getting you're getting some extra ice melt adding extra water but you're getting land pulled down too but that's that's what I can say that everything I've looked at I lead to believe in that let's go down here over 200 years the US has operated its ocean-going vessels under customary international law. It also is a party of a number of conventions, including the International Maritime Organization and bilateral and multilateral agreements as to protecting fisheries and international waters. With these in place, there is no real reason to add another huge layer of international law. Well, I tend to agree. And then you got a whole thing about a bunch of treaties, uh, more of these overreaching UN treaties lining up behind laws, looking to give more and more of our liberties away to globalist bureaucrats, the UN Small Arms Treaty, which would outlaw our Second Amendment gun rights. Well, that's exactly what they want, is to take away your protection so that you are left powerless, and they hold the weapons. So, you get the idea? The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which would usurp parental rights. Mm-hmm. Well, they've already done that. That's why so many children, you know, I don't mean that this rights of the child has already went through, but they've already curbed so many things that a parent can do to their child to try and correct them and keep them in line. Talking only goes so far, you know. Taking away privileges only goes so far. When your kid's cussing you out or flipping you off and, and they don't stop, 
what you going to do? I mean, the children nowadays don't seem to have any, uh, any, they shouldn't be scared of their parents, but they don't have any, they don't know anything's coming, you know. They know there's, they, these kids nowadays know and they've been told there's not, you know, you can't lay a hand on them or whatever, or the parent goes to jail. So, it's kind of hard, you know, when you got a, a kid that won't mind and they're, they're old enough to do these kind of things to correct them because, like I said, there's only so far it goes and then they just, uh, they're out of control and then they grow to adulthood and, and they can't function in society as maybe they would have if they'd been a way to be disciplined and held back from turning out the way that they, they've turned out. I'm not saying you got to beat them to death or anything like that, but you know they should realize the consequences of their actions uh, have something coming if they don't you know do what mom and dad says to do or not to do. <clears throat> back to this. It would assert parental rights, an agreement that would allow Americans to be tried in an international court. Mm -hmm. Ratifying laws would seem to endorse the notion that American rights can only be secured by appealing to new international institutions. We would not only open ourselves to immediate risk and complication regarding actions on the seas, we would make it harder to resist more ambitious schemes of global governance, not government governance, a rule of the law of the international. And you see, you can contact your senators over here and tell them no. So, don't be a thinking, this is just something about fishing or anything like that. It's way way more than that. And let's take a look at uh, this scumbag here and his scumbag buddy. This man here has now used his privilege, executive privilege, to try and keep uh, the information and the documents from coming out about the Fast and the Furious operation was sent to guns across the border. Now, this just, this plays into the New World Order, uh, what I, we just said about taking your gun rights away. Eric Holder is a dirt ball. Eric Holder is not given information he is in contempt of court. He should be tried or whatever, you know, put in jail. He should suffer the consequences. He should not be attorney general. He's done a lousy job. He's corrupt. But that's why I put him in there. Because he's a scumbag like him that will do exactly what he's told and he has so far. But when the heat got turned up and he got caught with his fingers in the cookie jar, well then here come big daddy King Obama to his rescue to abuse the power. <clears throat> You know, this kind of power goes way back, uh, you know, over 400 years. I mean, the, the royals and stuff like that back then used to use their uh, privileges. Although they say they've scaled it down now. Well, let's see what this scumbag is. This little article here. Uh, I believe it's ISA. Yeah, that's ISA. He's sending him, a, uh, scumbag Obama, a letter disputing his use of executive privilege. There cannot be executive privilege over criminal cover-up, and that he's exactly correct. Unless you're a criminal yourself, and this man is. Uh, Obama has usurped the Constitution, and this would be, I believe he's supposed to have quoted himself as saying he's a constitutional law professor or something like that, you know, in his resume, you know, he knows the Constitution. So he knows everything he's done has been against it. But yet he tries to spin it off and play it off on the TV, in the newspapers, uh, throughout the world, 
a different way. Lying to Congress is a crime. Well, you know, you got a bunch of congressmen that are liars too, but out of a hundred of them, you know, maybe there is one or two that's not liars, you know, on certain issues. You know, but this is a big time issue here. We have to write to see the documents. Yes, they do. Did you know? When did you know? What did you know? Including this guy. He is not above the law, although he thinks he is. Attorneys for Obama say the Republicans are not entitled to international deliberations by, or internal deliberation by officials within the executive branch. And Obama's invocation of executive privilege is one reason ISIS committee voted last week along party lines. <laughs> Even the dirtball Democrats still stick together in their little, little party. To recommend a contempt of Congress citation against Eric Holder, the full Republican-run House, House, not Senate, the House could vote as early as this week. And I believe they, they have or they're, or they're going to vote in, in contempt. Uh, ISIS committee is investigating the Fast and Furious, which did lead to, lead to the death of a Border Patrol agent. Well, here's, here's some stuff here. The guns lost, which was originally, originally meant to track the flow of firearms between the U.S. and the Mexican drug cartels were found near the scene of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry's killing, which sparked outrage. Originally meant to track the flow of firearms between the U.S. and the Mexican drug cartels, so they they'd intended to flood all these guns over there to the cartel on purpose. And then he was going to trot back here and say, we got to make all these restrictive gun laws and everything, you know, you're putting the guns in the hands of the cartels and they're killing everybody and everything, so that's why we got to make all these restrictive laws where you can't get the guns or or we make the ammunition so expensive that you can't buy it to load your gun. But, it didn't work out that way, did it? Nope, sure didn't. And now, we got the dirt ball. We got him dead to rights. We're going to see how this plays out. I have really, uh, oh, I took a lot of time on this, but I had a lot to say. There's a lot of things going on. Um, so I'm going to shut her down. But things are moving pretty good in 2012. I mean, the earth hadn't cracked. Uh, we haven't had a shift. And we ain't been smashed by anything yet. But we got six months left, don't we? to finish this out. And then you hear these reports uh, of a drill in St. Louis, you know, with military on the streets and all that stuff. And then you hear another report of a supposed event coming up in October uh, that they're readying for. And then you hear another deal of, ooh, we're going to be visited by aliens at the Olympics and junk like that. Uh, no, I don't believe we're going to have alien visitation at the Olympics. Uh, no, we're not from the planet Pleiades. Uh, let's see what else. Answers from an alien. Uh, I think that's the biggest crap that, well, some of the biggest crap that could possibly be listened to. Uh, so, that's how I wrapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I ruffle some feathers and shook the tree, that's just the way it is. Because if you can't get it, I'm going to have to jar you. So that maybe you'll wake up. Because you're either in a fog or a haze or you're still asleep. And i got to do something to shake you awake. So put that armor on. Oh, one more thing. 
Jesus was not just a regular nice guy. Nope, sorry. Wrong on that one. But get yourself armored up with him. Get yourself armored up with God. Humble yourself. Get on your knees and bow your head and close your eyes and pray and ask him to forgive you for not believing who he was and what he came here for. Because when you stand in his presence, all that disbelief is going to be part of what you get judged on. And myself, I wouldn't want to be somebody who didn't believe when they stood in front of him. I don't believe you'll stand. I believe you'll kneel and be humbled in the presence of the Lord. So y'all be safe as much as you can. It's awful hot. It's starting to come into that hot time. Um, try to stay cool. Stay hydrated. Stay inside if you can. Pray for everyone of the world. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody needs the love of God and His help. And you would be absolutely amazed at what a few, you know, billion people can do if they all pray for the good things and the help. Because it can't happen. He does hear. And he's, he's holding these things off during his timeline as long as he can. So you got the time to come around. The timeline is what it is. But during that time, all the people of the world have the time and the opportunity to come around. So that's an added plus to have more time. So use it wisely. I'll be back here as soon as I can whenever I find out some more stuff. You know, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open. I love every one of you out there and I thank you for all your prayers for the problems that my brother had and, and different issues and whatnot. They were appreciated and they did help. And I've done testimony to what has happened as far as his situation was concerned. Peace be unto all of you. And God bless you.